this is the Atari Basic Podcast. Trying to get away from the fact that the people were often choosing dogs based more on just appearance or you know, without really knowing that much about the breed. This is Antic, the Atari 8-Bit Podcast. I'm Kevin Savitz. There's an article in the August 1984 issue of Family Computing Magazine by Bill Camarda. It's called Behind the Screens, Family Dog. The article is about Choose a Pooch, an Atari computer program created by Dr. Randall Lockwood to help match people with the breed of dog that will work best in their living situation. I'll read a bit from that article. Looking for a family dog? A computer program recently introduced at Bidawee Home Association, a New York pet adoption center, can help. The program, Choose a Pooch, created by Dr. Randall Lockwood, a psychologist who specializes in pet owner interaction, was developed to avoid mismatching dogs and people. Bidawee and other animal shelters too often find themselves housing pets who proved incompatible with their adopted family's lifestyles. Choose a Pooch, by Lockwood's firm Humane Software, aims to prevent this problem. After you answer a series of questions regarding your family's lifestyle, ability to care for a pet, and the characteristics you'd like in a dog, the computer displays the 10 most suitable dogs for your family out of a possible 120 breeds. You can then find out any dog size, temperament, coat care, exercise requirements, trainability, and general suitability for your family. A home version of Choose a Pooch, designed for Atari home computers, disc only, will probably be available this fall. The Atari package, to be priced under $50, will also include Pick a Pet, a similar program that helps you choose among many different kinds of animals, from gerbils to tropical fish. If you don't have a computer, Lockwood offers a questionnaire instead. Fill it out, and Humane Software will send you a printout detailing the 10 best dogs for you, along with general information on dog ownership. There is a $5 charge for this service. Lockwood is also developing three other home education programs. One will help family diagnose common ailments in their pets and offer advice. The others are games, an animal trivia game, and one geared to teach family members proper pet care. So here's my interview with Randall Lockwood, which happened on November 10th, 2017. I've now been working with the American Society for Professional Cruelty and Animals for about 13 years, and before that, for 21 years, uh, I was with the Humane Society of the U.S. in Washington. But prior to that, in the time I uh, got into writing the Choose a Pooch, I was actually a professor of psychology at the State University of New York in Stony Brook on Long Island, and uh, had you know one of the very first uh, Atari 800s and had an early Commodore 64 and actually taught some very early courses in using you know, these new microcomputers for data collection and, and uh, other applications. Mm-hmm. So even even though I was mainly teaching psychology and animal behavior type courses, uh, the early days of, of computing and computer programming were, were my hobby. Nice. At the time, though, I actually was working on Long Island with Bidawee, which is a, an animal shelter uh, on Long Island, and uh, doing some assistance there with adoption counseling uh, for for placing animals. And it had occurred to me that, well, it might be fun to try to write a, a program on matching up people with a kind of dog that might be right for them. Of course, you know, now we have got all kinds of programs for that and, and special programs for assessing meet your match and things like that. Uh, but you know, I think I, I was one of the first people to have the concept of let's, let's try to do computer dating for dogs. <laughs> nice. So I assume this was written in, in basic. Um, yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that was, I, um, I had actually, I think my, my first computer, which is still up in my attic was, was, uh, you know, Commodore pet, uh, it finally gave up the ghost a few years ago, but I can I, I still run the uh, I occasionally try to run the Atari 800s and 400s and others that I have. Uh, I've I've joked to some people I think at one point I probably have the world's most expensive uh, Atari 400 because I had outfitted it with all kinds of extensions and things like that. Uh-huh. And 
and uh, actually used it in my psychology teaching. One of my uh, graduate students actually did uh, her dissertation on doing kind of a Three Mile Island uh, simulation. We actually set up a uh, you know, simulated control and, and some, some problems that, that would arise. It was all run by an Atari 400, and she actually got her PhD for that. Wow. We actually also published a, a study trying to simulate how animals forage optimally, uh, you're trying to minimize the distance they travel, sort of the, the old traveling salesman problem, but using using a program that let, let little kids play a game where they had to collect stuff and find the best path. And so that, that was one of my interests was trying to find creative ways to use off the shelf you know, microcomputers to, to do real research. Very cool. Cool. All right. So, um, so you're creating these little programs and, and using computers and how did the idea for this choose a pooch program come around? Well, I think trying to, people were always asking me, okay, you know about dogs, you know, what, what kind of dog should I get? And I would start asking questions about their lifestyle and uh, trying to get away from the fact that the people were often um, choosing dogs based more on just appearance or, you know, without really knowing that much about the breed. So I don't even remember that. I want to see if I actually, I might even still have the code for it somewhere. Uh, the kinds of questions that we would ask, there was a, uh, I think about a 20 question questionnaire about lifestyle and it was with how much exercise can you, can you provide for the dog and how much space do you have? Things like that. And really that was in the early days of trying to work with animal shelters to uh, educate people to have realistic expectations when they were choosing a dog. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that was part of it, not, not just to make a match, but also to make people stop and think about, uh, you know, what what were they looking for, and and what animal might might fit best with their lifestyle? Sure, uh, and it looks like uh, so. Is this a program that that you you sold, and this was available? no, I never 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 sold it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, I we had looked a little bit into trying to do something commercially with it. I think we'd even had some discussions. I think with Parade Magazine uh, had done a little piece on it, and we had discussed the possibility of actually having people this is in the days of pre-internet days, having people kind of mail in the questionnaire and we would run it through the program and we would generate a, a list of suggestions for them. And uh, I was anticipating that if I'm going to do that, I'm going to need a faster printer and more computers. And, and that just never really came to fruition, partly because I was teaching full time and didn't really have Time for that as a sideline, so it never had any commercial applications at, at, at that point. Huh. Uh, really, the only um, I did write a lot of uh, games and stuff for uh, the old Commodore PET. Uh, you know, there were there was uh, there were a, a couple of magazines, and I, and I published a few things also in Creative Computing. Huh. So, and th- those I those I sold probably about a dozen or or, or so various computer games. Uh, in, in including one of my favorites was was just called Drone Wars, uh, really anticipating the rise of drones in, in, in warfare when, when really there was very little use by the U.S. military. But that was kind of a fun one. And, and a lot of other uh, basic board games and things like that. I think also my favorite was a program I had sold that played Indian poker with, using you know, Commodore graphics with people holding the cards up to their heads and stuff like that. And it was a lot of fun. Huh. Cool, nice. And I, unfortunately, I was never had quite the the time or skill to go beyond you know basic and some of the uh, the graphic capabilities of, of Atari and, and Commodore. Mm-hmm. Never really mastered you know, machine language and things like that. And, and you know, these these days, when I see this the state of computer gaming, there's no way I could even begin to get into that. But in the early days, it was fun. You. Know, Trying to pack something into basically you know seven k of RAM, yeah. and and uh, I, I did write another weather forecasting program that that used various uh, measures of changes in uh, cloud cover and and uh, barometric pressure and stuff, and actually proved to be pretty accurate. So that was another successful. Of course, in those days, you know, selling selling a computer program was 
you know, you might get uh, 200 bucks. I think was about the most I ever made selling a program. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't usually a big profit thing, especially for little niche applications like, like these. So, um, see, I've, I've, as you've been talking, I mean, I looked at newspapers.com and there's actually many articles about choose a pooch from back oh, really? in the day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just like at least a dozen. Uh, I found yeah. one, I found one um, in let's see what's this New York magazine. It looks like there was like a, a, an event right. where people could show up and that's um, right. Yeah, that that was the premiere where we 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 did it at the, I believe at the Bidewee Shelter and people came and there is a I think I've got that that clipping and you know people have been sitting there. Let's see, I've got one. Oh, a National Enquirer did a piece too. I just <laughs> pulled from my file. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, just called Nice Doggy. <laughs> and yeah, but my, my favorite, of course, is being in Time Magazine with Bill Gates on the cover. What's it saying there? Read it to me. Let me see. Let me find the actual. I, it, it was a, an article about interesting new, new sort of weird computer applications. Let me see if I can find it. It says, the, the Bidoui Animal Shelter in New York City is using a program called Choose a Pooch, which helps match potential owners with homeless mongrels. Devised by Randy Lockwood, 35, an assistant psychology professor at the Stony Brook campus of the State University of New York, Choose a Pooch catalogs the temperament and needs of 120 breeds to indicate how a particular dog would fit a prospective owner. That was it, but it was covered along with a number of other interesting applications. The software is the magic carpet to the future. This was uh, April 1984. You still might have the uh, might have the program because it's it's not archived anywhere. I would love to. Yeah, see the um, I probably I, I still might. I have I've got all my all my old. You know, if probably if the Atari discs might have degraded by now, but. Uh, um, I might still have it. I don't. I don't think I ever printed out the code. Uh, it's not in my file here. Uh, I also, you know, I, I basically was pretty much my, my skills were limited to, to 6502 processors because mm-hmm. I also had a grant from from Apple and uh, Apple Education Foundation because I developed another program uh, called about wolves because uh, my research had been on wolves and I've been lecturing around the country uh to school groups about wolves and wolf behavior. And what we did was take the 100 most commonly asked questions and created just a very you know, simple system for, for parsing typed in input and going through a, a, an assortment of files and generating customized answers. And it, it, it worked quite well. You know, people would say how big do wolves get or how long do wolves live and it could identify the keywords and, and print out the appropriate answer. And that was actually installed in a couple of science museums. We had it uh, for a while at the Science Museum in, in uh, Boston cool. and Rochester, New York Science Museum. And part of the thinking behind that also went into uh, the uh, Wolf Center in Ely, Minnesota. So uh, basically, Apple had funded the development of computer-based programs to educate people about wildlife management and particularly wolves and wolf conservation. And that that was actually, that that was probably my first computers because Apple actually donated that. And that was even in the days before uh, there were monitors available, so basically uh, Apple gave me like three hundred dollars to buy a color TV to hook up to the Apple because <laughs> they didn't have any monitors. Wow! Uh, so, but so basically, all of my, you know, principally all of my programming was for Apple, Atari, and, and Commodore, uh, and, and really, really enjoyed it. And for a while, you know, people, people kept saying, you know, why, why don't you just. Uh, who <laughs> drop the psychology and stuff and, and get more into into computing, which I had briefly considered. And when I first started at the uh, Humane Society, uh, the US, I, I was their IT department. I, I, I literally brought the first computer into into that organization, which was my my Apple II from from Apple. And because uh, at the time they had this huge word processing system that was very clunky, and of course used huge. Yeah, you know, floppy disks and stuff. So I really brought the first micro, and then, and as the prices came down, and they started buying some PCs, 
Uh, I was the one hooking those up, and eventually, of course, they had to create a whole IT department. But uh, back in those days, I was a part-time IT department of one <laughs> in the first computers. Yeah. But again, that that, that was uh, again that was about the same time, about 1984, 1985. This article said you were working on other you working on a computer program to help families diagnose common ailments of their pets. I don't I don't recall having gone down that that route. I might have you know thought about that but uh-huh. decided that was a little bit beyond my my expertise in terms of I'm I'm not a veterinarian although now I supervise a lot of veterinarians but uh, I think I decided I'd leave that one up to the professionals. <laughs> sure. But, uh, but uh, no, and I, I still look back, you know, fondly on those days. And, and I, as I say, I haven't been able to uh, part even with the the old broken down Commodore pet. But uh, still have kept my 64s and a couple of them. I have a few Ataris lying around. I haven't had the, the the space to drag them out and fire them up again. But I'm I'm hopeful that everything uh, I can get everything working again. Oh, well, good. I hope. Hope that you you find the time to do that. That's awesome. All right. Um, I think I have what I need. Is there anything about that time that I haven't asked you that I should have? No, no. But uh, you know, t- tell me more about uh, your work because I wasn't even aware that there there was an Atari show. Sure. So. Um, it's uh, the podcast is called Antic, the Atari Eight Bit Podcast. Oh, sure. And, uh, uh, and, and yeah. I still have my collection of Antic magazines upstairs. Oh, do you? Nice. Yeah. Yeah, we we are named kind of in honor of that. And I still remember uh, first time when the, the first demonstration I'd seen of uh, you know, the, the the Atari 800 and, and saw Star Raiders for the first time, mm. and uh, just was was blown away. Played it, and it wasn't even out commercially yet. But I, I remember that I, I actually had ordered Star Raiders before I got my computer. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I was just sitting there, you know, thumbing through the instruction manuals. I can't wait. And all of the, the time I, I, I spent uh, playing that. So, so where where were you that you saw the, managed to see Star Raiders before it was released? Uh, on Long Island. It was a, a computer store. And uh, I guess they had, you know, advanced copies. And it was only a couple of weeks before the release, but they they had gotten it. And uh, I'd also gone to one or two computer shows and had seen stuff. I so I remember seeing being being all excited when I you know, saw saw the the, the live the computer for the first time. You know, thinking back to, to all those days, but it was an exciting time and in, in, uh, in home computing and. Uh, I had uh, written a couple of uh, submitted a couple of things to Creative Computing Magazine, and and uh, actually had some correspondence with Dave All. I don't know if those guys are even still around. Yeah, he's still he's still around. I, I uh, interviewed him a couple of years ago. Oh, that's good. Yeah, because that was another thing that, that I wrote one science fiction story. You know, Creative Computing published uh, a collection of science fiction stories that were all. Uh, based on, on microcomputers. And I basically wrote a short story, the plot of which was essentially the same, although it was three or four years before it came out, of uh, um, The Last Starfighter. Basically, you know, a, a kid is recruited to fight aliens by, by playing a video game. Mm-hmm. And that was a concept I put in my story that was published in Creative Computing. And then it was like four or five years later that, that uh, Last Starfighter came out. Hey, that's my store. <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 Ender's Game took the idea uh, yet yeah, another time. <laughs> yep. Yeah. What well, was a good so idea? Well, well good. I'll I'll, have to, I'll I'll look for the the podcast and uh, I look forward to it. And hey, you know, well, hopefully, I'm, I'm hoping sometime in retirement or whatever, I'll drag a lot of this stuff down, clean it off. Uh, and hopefully get the stuff up and up and running again, and, and get back connected to the the hobbyist world. Oh, that'd be awesome! Um, cool. Well, thank you for talking to me. Okay, thanks a lot. If you enjoy these interviews and would like to contribute, there are two ways you can help. 
You can help fund these interviews directly by contributing to my Patreon. A small monthly contribution will help offset the expenses of making these oral history interviews. Contribute at patreon.com slash savitz. Or make a tax-deductible contribution to the Internet Archive, a nonprofit digital library that has done incredible things to preserve computer history. Make your tax-deductible contribution at archive.org slash donate. Thanks.